Hey guys, Leanne here on Grady's Mom. I am starting a new week of what I cooked for dinner. So tonight I am making Olive Garden Copycat Zuppa Toscana. It's my favorite Olive Garden soup. So I've got a pound of ground sausage. I just used the Jimmy Dean regular sausage that I have cooked up. I actually did not have any of the chicken broth in the carton like I usually use, so I made my own using the Better Than Bouillon, which I actually prefer this. I think it tastes better than the kind in the carton. So it's one teaspoon to every um, eight ounces of water. So I've got 32 ounces of water and four teaspoons of Better Than Bouillon. I brought it to a boil, so that's waiting on me. So I've got my crock pot here with a crock pot liner and I've got potatoes sliced thin, an onion, some garlic, and some bacon bits. You can also use bacon that you cook yourself, but I like these for quick, much easier shortcut steps. This is like the Hormel Black Label bacon bits. They're the kind that are chewy. They're not crunchy, so they have more of like a real bacon effect. So I'm going to pour the chicken broth in here. Put the sausage in here, let this cook for about four hours on low, and then when I get home from work, all I will have to do is add the kale and the heavy cream. I'm actually going to use half and half mixed with a little bit of flour. It'll thicken up just a little bit. I'm going to add some red pepper flake right now and bring it all together to get ready for later. All right, so I added in the chicken broth, the sausage, and then some red pepper flakes. You can see them kind of spread out here. So four hours on low, and then I will show you when I add the kale, the cup of half and half mixed with a little bit of flour, and it's the most delicious soup. You can skip the red pepper flake if you don't like the heat. I also have two videos on this. I have a crock pot version and a stovetop version. So depending on how much time you have, I will link those both down below in case you want to check them out. All right, so now it's the last half hour. I've got some half and half that I've mixed with some flour and whisked it together. I've got my kale, which is already washed and chopped. I added in the flour and uh, half and half mix and the kale, put the lid on, and in half an hour, it was absolutely perfect. So I went ahead and just ladled out some nice bowls. This is a soup we absolutely love. When I don't have a lot of time, I do it in the crock pot, and when I'm home, I can do it on the stovetop. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this recipe. I'll link both down below, and we will see you guys tomorrow with a new dinner. I am home from work and getting ready to put dinner in the oven. So this morning, I, or actually last night, I thawed out some ground beef. So I mixed it with some panko breadcrumbs, an egg, some onion, and I drizzle, like squeeze um, barbecue sauce all over the top. I've got cauliflower, broccoli, and tomatoes that I drizzle with some EVOO. I sprayed the tray with the spray, and I did black pepper and some onion salt. So I'm going to get these into the oven and figure out what else I'm going to make on the side. So to go along with the meatloaf and the veggies, I you guys probably remember these. I showed these in the last dinner video or the one before that, and I've also showed these in lunch videos. They are twice baked loaded broccoli cheese potatoes. They, um, I made them and I froze these. So they don't look very appetizing right now because they've literally been, been frozen for a couple weeks. But I think I'm going to go ahead and just cook them and we'll have them with the meatloaf and the veggies and they'll probably, I don't know if we'll be able to eat all of this, but whatever's left I'll wrap up and portion for lunch tomorrow. So the potato came out delicious and the meatloaf was phenomenal. And the veggies were awesome and I love cauliflower so much it's one of my favorite if not my favorite veggie to roast but it was a delicious comfort food dinner and we will see you tomorrow this night I did breakfast for dinner I'm using the Aldi sausage patties I've got some cinnamon swirl raisin bread that I turned into a French toast so I'm just cooking it up and my husband had three sausage patties they're not all that huge and three pieces of french toast i had the same thing but a less sausage patties and then we both had some cotton candy grapes and some blueberries since as you can see we had an excess of both and this was our dinner tonight 
The next night we had a little bit of like a heat wave for this time of year. So Matt grilled up some thick cut pork chops and brushed them with a Kettleman Gold barbecue sauce. I made some steamed peas on the side and this is the Near East roasted chicken flavored rice pilaf. I prefer just the regular rice pilaf but this was really good as well. A couple nights later, I had some fresh bagels that I picked up from Brugger's. So Justin was over and we all wanted breakfast for dinner again. So I made the great value uh, like hash brown potatoes. I just fried them up in a little bit of oil and I did the sausage patties again. This was actually a few days later from the other dinner uh, breakfast for dinner clip. And we all had a toasted bagel with butter. It was really yummy dinner. The next night I made some chili. I do have a cooking video on the chili recipe that I use, but I serve mine over pasta and tonight I topped it with some sharp cheddar and also some of these sliced green onions. I really liked the addition of the onions on top and we will see you tomorrow. Hey guys, home from work. Sorry if it's a little dark, but it with daylight savings now, it gets dark at like five o'clock. So by the time I get home at like 6.30, it's pitch black. So I have every single light in the downstairs on hoping you can see this okay so I thought out this huge chicken breast it's actually butterflied um, this chicken breast is probably about a pound and a half it's huge so I'm gonna roast it up and I wanted to show you what I'm gonna use so I've got EVOO salt and pepper garlic powder oregano and I'm gonna also use some of this 21 seasoning salute which I'm pretty sure is yes this is a salt free seasoning so there's no salt in here at all which is why I'm adding salt if this did ha if this had salt I would omit the salt here hopefully that makes sense so I've got my oven preheating to 375 I sprayed a little cooking spray so the breast doesn't stick I'm just going to drizzle it with EVOO season it up and roast this off and then I'm going to have to let it rest for like 10 minutes before I slice it so what my plan is is since it's such a large breast I'll obviously cut it down the middle, slice it up, and then I'm gonna use like half or a little bit more than half tonight to make grilled chicken dinner salads. So what I mean by that is like the salad is going to be our main event. Sometimes I do a lot of side salads, but tonight I'm gonna actually do like a dinner salad and using the chicken to bulk it up. And then whatever is left, which should be a little less than half of this, I'm going to prep a couple salads, a little bit smaller scale salads for our lunches tomorrow. So you'll see the salads for lunch in a lunch video and you'll see the dinner salads tonight when it's done. So here's what it looks like with the EVOO and the seasonings on it before it goes into the oven. So when the chicken came out of the oven, I let it rest for about 15 minutes so all the juices could redistribute, sliced it up on the greens with the tomatoes, olives, corn, cucumber, peppers, and onions, and we had some ranch dressing with it. It was really, really good and definitely hit the spot, and we will see you tomorrow. I'm about to start dinner. I actually thawed out some shrimp that I had frozen. I just de uh, thawed it this morning. I took it out of the um, freezer and let it sit out and then put it back in the uh, refrigerator once it started to thaw. I've got yellow bell pepper, red bell pepper, some sliced carrot and red onion that I'm going to saute up and get these cooked through. And then I'll add the shrimp last since they take no time at all and then I'm gonna make like a noodle shrimp veggie type of bowl tonight so I'm gonna go ahead and get these going now so I started by sauteing the veggies up in a little bit of sesame oil and just kind of let those cook just a little bit I did add some of this low sodium low sodium soy sauce into it some garlic powder as well as some onion salt and I garnished the final bowls with sesame seeds I had spaghetti or ramen as my choices for the noodles and I thought the ramen would actually go for the vibe I was going for a little bit more. I removed the veggies from the hot pan. I added the shrimp which I just had salted and peppered and let those cook on both sides and then I put them on a paper towel to drain any excess oil that there might have been. 
And then I went ahead and put the noodles in the bowl with the veggies and the shrimp. I also cut up some of the white parts of the green onion as well and added a little garnish of the sesame seeds. This came out really good, I have to say. Um, I think the ramen worked better than the spaghetti would have. It just kind of had a more of a, I don't know, the texture I was going for. The shrimp were really delicious though. So thank you guys so much for watching this week's What's for Dinner video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have an entire playlist of these types of videos linked down below from over the years, and I will see you all in my next video. Mm -hmm.